Hello, this is Books of the Stock Market. How's everyone doing? As for me, I came back from my run and I feel pretty good. It was nice and sunny, but it was still a bit cold. I think it was 2 degrees Celsius or 35 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Other than that, this week I worked a total of 50 hours, which I didn't mind at first, but thinking about it, I won't probably do it ever again. The extra cash is nice, but it just made me exhausted on weekends and made me very unproductive. Moving on from my small observation on the costs of overtime, let's talk about secondary indicators. The secondary indicators that will be covered in this video is volume and open interest. Until now, we have been doing technical analysis by only looking at price. Now we will add volume and open interest. This video will define open interest and volume, but volume will be the topic that will be more deeply analyzed in this video while open interest will be the main focus of next video. I also have a previous video that I made that talked about the basics of open interest. So if you're interested, look in the comment section below because I'll link it there. Let's first get open interest out of the way so that I can focus on volume for the rest of the video. First, open interest is mainly for futures. And open interest tells us like the total number of contracts at the end of the day. So what does this mean? This means that it counts the number of longs or shorts. This number is not the sum of longs and shorts, but rather just the number of longs or shorts. This is because for every long, there must be a short. So counting both of them will be like counting the same thing twice. Now, let's talk about the mechanics behind open interest. Open interest increases or decreases depending on the change of unliquidated contracts. This means that the value changes as people buy or sell the contracts. There are four scenarios that can play out. The first scenario is that a person buys a new long contract while someone else sells a new short contract. This means that there will be an increase in open interest as both buyers and sellers bought and sold a new contract. The number does not change when a buyer buys a new long contract, but a seller sells an old long contract. Likewise, if a seller sells a new short while a buyer buys an old short, there would be no change. This makes sense as one person is buying or selling while the other person is doing the exact opposite. The final scenario is that the buyer buys an old short while the seller sells an old long. This would cause a decrease in open interest as there is a decrease in the net number of unliquidated contracts. If you found the previous slide a bit confusing, don't worry because you could probably get away with not knowing the technicalities and only knowing what I will show you on this slide. So how do we combine price, volume, and open interest? If the price is rising, volume is up, and open interest is up, this is a strong signal. So the person should buy into the uptrend. If price is rising, but volume and open interest is both down, this is a weak uptrend signal, so the person should be wary of a reversal or a topping pattern. On the other hand, if price is declining, but volume and open interest are both up, then it is a weak downtrend signal, so the person should be wary of a reversal or a bottoming pattern. Finally, if price is declining, volume is down, and open interest is down, this is a strong sell signal. Now that we got open interest out of the way, let's focus on volume. Like we have covered in previous videos, we know that volume is important in confirming the price action. For instance, the head and shoulders pattern, triangles, and flags are all examples of patterns that need volume to confirm the price action. You probably heard me use the phrase confirm the price action often, so what does this exactly mean? Confirmation and technical analysis means that the technical signals and indicators are pointing in the same direction. This signals that the current trend is strong. The opposite of a confirmation is a divergence. A divergence occurs when technical signals and indicators are not pointing in the same direction. This signals that the current trend is pretty weak. Furthermore, the majority of traders believe that volume usually precedes price. If you think about it, they're pretty spot on as you need more volume to the upside than on the downside to force the price to go up as there is more buying pressure than selling pressure. Now that we introduced volume, let's look at some indicators that are based on volume. 
The first indicator is called the unbalanced volume. This indicator is a cumulative indicator in that it measures buying and selling pressure by totaling volume on positive days and subtracting it on negative days. So this means that when the day ends green, it gets a positive value. On the other hand, if the day ends red, it gets a negative value. These values are then added up with the previous day's values. Now let's look at how you read OBV. If OBV increases, then it means price will rise if price action is currently flat or moving downwards. On the other hand, if OBV decreases, it means that prices will fall if price action is currently flat or moving upwards. The one drawback of OBV is that it does not categorize days that are barely green or red really well. For instance, if the entire day is negative but there was a small pump at the end of the day that pushes the price to a state of barely positive, it will be assigned a positive value. Does a day ending barely green when the whole day was red really constitute a positive value? Therefore, it is important to remember to use other technical indicators so that you can confirm that your technical indicator is actually pointing you in the right direction. Here we have an example of how to apply OVV. This is IWM, which is an ETF that follows the Russell 2000. Here I have OVV that represents the purple line overlapping the IWM. We see that the previous high was made a week ago, and the previous high was at around $185.69. This week we made a new all-time high, and we see that the OVV line also made a newer high. As price and volume both increased, we see that they confirm one another. This means that looking at OBV alone, the IWM has a strong uptrend. Moving on from OBV, let's look at Money Flow Index. The Money Flow Index combines volume and price. Basically, it is a volume weighted RSI. Although not formally covered in any of the videos I've made, RSI is a popular indicator that tells if a stock is overbought or oversold. MFI also does this in that, like the RSI, if the MFI is above 80, it means that the stock is overbought, while if the MFI is below 20, then it is considered oversold. It is also important to note that, like the RSI, if there is a strong uptrend or downtrend, then it can continue to be overbought or oversold for a long time. Finally, MFI is usually used to signal reversals as when conditions are overbought, we can see a retraction downwards. Likewise, when MFI is oversold, we see a reversal to the upside. Here, we see the IWM and the Money Flow Index. As I said two slides before, we recently made an all-time high. Let's see if the MFI confirms the price action. As you can see, I drew a blue line on the IWM which indicates the previous all-time high. This all-time high is represented here in the Money Flow Index. Now let's look at what happened this week when we broke through that previous all-time high. As we made new all-time highs, we see that the MFI did not go above the previous level. This means that a bearish divergence has occurred as the MFI did not make a higher high and therefore does not support the current trend. Currently, we see the MFI and the OBV giving opposite signals. Therefore, it is important to remember to check multiple indicators. The final indicator that we'll be looking at is called the Demand Index. The Demand Index is another indicator that tracks volume by using around 20 different data points. Instead of going into what the indicator tracks specifically, let's learn about the six rules that are important when reading the Demand Index. The first rule is that if there is a divergence between the Demand Index and price, it means that the trend is weakening. The second rule is that price often rallies to a new high following an extreme peak in the Demand Index. This makes sense as the demand index tracks volume and volume precedes price. The third rule is that higher prices with a low demand index indicate a top. The fourth rule is that if the demand index is crossing zero, it means that there is a change in trend. Basically, the demand index oscillates between 0.4 and negative 0.4, and every time it crosses zero, there is a change in trend. The fifth rule is that if the demand index is at or near zero, it means that current trend is weakening. The final rule is that if there is a long-term divergence between the demand index and price, it predicts a major top or bottom. 
Here, we see the demand index and the IWM. We see that on the demand index, a bearish divergence occurred as demand did not increase. However, in my point of view, I think that the move upwards is not as weak as suggested, as we see the demand index did cross over and bounce from zero. In this regard, we can conclude that move upwards was not done with weak strength as the demand index bounced from 0 to 0 0.2, but it was also not done on strong strength as there was a bearish divergence that has formed. As the three different indicators are giving mixed results, I would probably look at more indicators and do more technical analysis. Or the best thing to do when you're unsure is to wait on the sidelines as there are always better opportunities to trade. Well, that's it for this video. I hope everyone learned as much as I did reading the book, as that is the whole point of this channel. In this video, we first introduced open interest and then moved our way to talk about volume and different indicators that use volume. The next video will dive deeper into open interest, futures, and options. So if you don't want to miss out on those topics, please subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this video and felt like you learned something new, like this video as it really supports the channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer them. Well, this was Books of the Stock Market and I'll see you guys next Wednesday at 3pm Central Time. Thanks.